So uh, how's it going? Yeah, good. Um, we just, uh, we, tr we like have traveled before. We've mm -hmm. been overseas, I guess at this point you can say that. Um, yeah. But I think that like, we still don't, we still don't like know how to adjust to the time thing. Like we both just woke up from naps. Like I, I walked from the other room with the other couch mm -hmm. and came in to see he was sleeping and I felt relieved because yeah. I didn't want to be the only one jo screwed up. Josh uh, is, is a much cuter napper than <laughs> that, I No, that's not true. No, you I look at my him napping. It's just like. No, no, you look at him napping and you're just like, I want to be where he is right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good place. Yeah. In terms of the, of the energy that the, the band has on stage, is it then difficult when you go to another country and, and you feel exhausted, jet lagged? What do you think? Uh, it, it, I think that there's something about getting on stage that it doesn't matter how tired you are, your adrenaline's going to kick in. And um, I mean, I'm, like I said, Josh is such a cute napper. <laughs> that it's like, I get energized. Energy from that? From just watching you nap. <laughs> I'm glad I can do that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no, you're welcome. Well, the, the last six months uh, have been uh, a big six months for you guys. Um, a lot of things have happened. Uh, some, some would call it your, your mainstream breakthrough. You, you played the M uh, MTV Movie Awards. Mm -hmm. So how do you look back at the, the past six months? Um, we, don't, we don't feel much different, personally. Uh, but, I don't know, it's cool to, to do some things that you know, your parents can watch you do on TV. And that's always a, it's a cool moment. Um, other than that, there's some, there's some things like, whether it's a television performance or any sort of um, visibility in the mainstream market uh, that comes and goes and really where a... Uh, a career is sustained and the, the true parts of, of um, traction, you can feel the music kind of growing and the people around it growing. It's when you play live shows, the real shows, the shows that aren't about a, you know, a TV performance or about a particular song, but really about um, an entire band and, and an entire album. And uh, playing festivals is, I don't know, something that I want to do the rest of my life. Same. Is, is there then a feeling that, in a sense, you've all also been vaulted into the public eye more? Or hasn't that become that big, a, big of an issue? I, I think well, we were talking about it. I know that directly after the, you brought the MTV Movie Award performance. So looking at that, directly afterward, we were kind of both like on our Twitters or mm -hmm. like searching like uh, and on seeing the Twitskies. Yeah, on, in the Twitter, whatever. Twitskies. Uh, the Twitskies, yeah. Uh, there were a lot of, we saw a lot of, um, well, it stuck out a lot. It, there were the, the negative comments and stuff okay. stuck out to us. And it was like, it was interesting because um, typically we just go, we would go and, and perform um, and a lot of the people, people will buy a ticket to come to the show. So typically people who don't like what you're doing aren't going to go and buy a ticket to come see you. Um, so it's response is usually, usually positive that we see. And so when it's something that's projected in front of a lot of people um, that didn't necessarily sign up for it or buy a ticket mm -hmm. or even know that it was going to happen, um, there's a lot more, there's a lot more of that possibility for people to not like it publicly, publicly, which yeah. is interesting. It was interesting for us. D did it affect you? Uh, we we were we were super depressed for like three days. No, 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 no I can imagine the. the <laughs> no, no, there was a moment. There was a moment where I you know looked over at Josh like you know what, this is at a high enough level and in a, in a, on a platform that's large enough for people to want to speak out against like what they think is good or. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, this, is, this is art. This is a song that we wrote that, like, I don't understand how anyone can, like, hear a song that someone honestly wrote and think that's a bad song. So it, it doesn't even, 
maybe you don't like it. it doesn't mean it's doesn't mean it's bad yeah. or poorly done or I mean obviously there's a degree there's a degree of that skill and excellence that it takes to, to write songs but when it's someone's you know interpretation of what they're trying to say at the moment is really not a good and bad way of of doing that and uh, you know they, they just there was a moment where it was like all right I gotta I gotta just I just gotta, I just gotta not listen to mm -hmm. people you know and, and not only that but it's when our our really our main core group of fans kind of rose to the occasion and not only defended us and but like just, just we we realized in that moment when we were put into kind of like a mainstream spotlight we realized who our fans were mm -hmm. and that, that was cool kind of like weeded people out and now we know who kind of our our core group is well you, you've talked about this relationship you have with the fans uh, before um, wanting to give them more than just a show, but an experience, and is is this in a sense an uh, uh, an experience of belonging? Because well, maybe I'm I'm yeah. way overthinking this, but I was thinking of kind of a hierarchical structure, and and that's kind of you want them to to be inclusive instead of having you here and and them them here. Yeah, I think there's maybe a um, kind of a an experience of ownership. Um, in the sense that it, it's it's something that people can can take and make it their own um, in so many different ways, and and we we get to see it a lot how people choose to make it their own and um, kind of take control of what it is, you know what what, mm -hmm. what that looks like, um, which is really cool because we say it we say it a lot, but. Um, it wouldn't just work if it was just two of us traveling around and playing on stages with nobody there. Um, and so, in the ways that people are are creative with how they how they own the music, um, it's really it's it's inspiring for us and it's encouraging too. Um, so, I yeah, I think I think so. There's no one. There's no one more important to us than our fans. I mean, if everything that we do is truly thought through their lens, mm -hmm. you know, with a filter of, you know, the people who have been supporting this and who want to be a part of this and get behind this, what, what, would, they, what would they want? So obviously you don't want to live your life constantly, you know, worrying about what other people think. Mm -hmm. um, but it is it is good to kind of have that that constant force out there that, that you know who they are, how they think, what they like, and um, and so it's it's good to ha you know as we write new songs, as we come up with new ideas for shows, um, instead of trying to figure out what you know mainstream music or radio stations or whoever. What they want, we've met these people who are our fans. Now that we've kind of traveled around and played enough shows, we know what what they want, and that's that's our goal is to is try to give them that. Do, do you go online and, and look at live footage of yourselves then to to kind of get in, into that perspective? Yeah, um, I think that we we both think it's really important to to do that kind of thing, and we also started um, setting up like GoPros around the stage. Um, different angles. Some of it's kind of, uh, some of it's sometimes on us, so that we can, so that we can look back and watch the footage and try and get better from a musical standpoint. And some of it's um, facing an audience to see how people respond or react. Yeah. Um, because I, it's it's all important data to, yeah. um, to kind of study and learn. And it's really hard for me to watch live footage of us because I just feel so like weird about watching myself do that on stage. Um, but it's one of the best things that I've done, force myself to, to kind of, okay, why would I do that? Why did I say that? Why did I, but then at the same time going, okay, I feel like this is forced. I feel, you know, yeah. I, I can see, I can see through uh, my facade here. And that's what's great about live shows is when you put when you put enough smart people into one room, 
they can they can sniff out whether or not you're being real or, or authentic and um, kind of uh, maybe sometimes when you're on stage you, you lose sense of mm-hmm. whether or not they believe you right. um, and that's something that we really we really try to get better at with our live show is just being aware of what's going on in the room and not trying to not trying to fake them and you know or yell at them or lie to them or make them think that we're cooler than we actually are does your approach then uh, with what you just mentioned uh, change when it comes to festivals like these um we come to a festival like pink pop here and uh we we just we just don't know what to expect and that's that's what's really cool about um our fans and the internet and how music is shared um you know we kind of convince ourselves that no one knows who we are that's how we've always approached every live show starting as a as a you know a local band that's our number one fear is anyone going to show up and if they do will they even know who we are um and then will they even like us at all and i don't think that'll ever change i don't think we'll ever um, wonder, n- we'll never not wonder those questions before taking a stage, especially in a you know a different country for a, for a festival. And um, but those are truly my my favorite times on stage is when there's a a little bit of doubt, a little bit of uh, insecurity. Okay, uh, thank you for your time. Yeah, man. Thank, thank you. Sure.